What's going on everybody? It's Ollie from Flight Comp and I need to do some maintenance on this motor here. I took this out of my um, strong or windy F5J model and it's probably had over a season of use so quite a bit. Um, now it, it it probably didn't get used as much as my light model because this is from the windy and I probably use it uh, you know maybe forty percent of the time or less in the contest season but I think it's time to service this this is a 10 shock 1515 motor and it has a Ryzen hour 5 to 1 gearbox and just trying to turn this thing it's pretty difficult it's not smooth I don't know if there's internal damage or wear in here or if it just needs to be cleaned and greased but um, I have another motor here which is brand new with the same gearbox and this thing spins super smooth and free so what I want to do is pull this gearbox off and have a look inside and, and see what it looks like after a year's worth of use or a season's worth of use or more if it's totally, uh, if the grease is totally gone, if it's all black, if there's bits of metal shavings in there or what. So let's uh, open this guy up and have a look. If you're going to do some maintenance on your uh, Ryzen Hour gearbox, I highly recommend you get some of these wrenches. They're designed specifically to assemble and take apart the uh, 5 to 1 Micro Edition gearbox. So you'll need two of these an allen wrench and some uh, 2.5 millimeter screws and let's get to it so the first thing you're going to want to do is get some of your screws you'll need three and we're going to get one wrench and to see it has a um, the mounting patterns for the front of the gearbox here Oh, you can also use this as a uh, bottle opener for beer after you're flying at the field, so that's quite handy. So anyway, we'll get this going here. Put the screw in. doesn't have to be super tight. Put another screw in. And there we go. So we have the wrench on the front of the motor with the three screws. And then we're going to use the other wrench here. And this goes on the adapter plate. There's flats milled into this adapter plate. And we're just going to open it like that. But before I do, on um if you're if you're if you just want to add lubrication to the gearbox, you can actually remove this screw if you manage to uh, clamp the shaft down somehow. You can remove this screw and inject a few drops of grease uh, through the shaft, but I want to do a complete teardown and cleaning and see what it looks like inside. So let's crack this sucker open and see what it looks like. There we go. I did put a little bit of thread lock on here. Um, when I assembled this, sometimes when you buy these motors, they may or may not come pre assembled. So, if you do assemble it yourself, it's a good idea to put a little bit of medium thread lock, thread locking compound on the adapter plate. Okay, take these screws out and we'll spin the uh, gearbox off. Let's see what it looks like on the inside here. I'm going to hold the motor up so nothing drips or falls out of the gearbox. I'm going to spin off the motor. That has a uh, that thrust washer or whatever uh, stuck to the adapter plate. OK. 
Okay, I don't know if you can see in there. The grease is definitely very thin. And very black. So what I'm going to do is pull out these planetary gears and you have to be really careful because there's needle bearings in there. So you don't want to lose those needle bearings. So I'm going to pull these out carefully and put them in something. All right, I got a little uh, cup here, container. And I'll just gently use some pliers. Now the gear came out, but the uh, inner race still in there so I'm just gonna I'm not putting any pressure on these at all I'm just lifting them out very gently you could use your fingers too or some tweezers if you're not worried about getting messy So the gearbox is empty and you know what that bearing is actually feeling a little rough. I bet that bearing could use replacement. And then we have our planetary gears and needle bearings so I don't know about this gearbox I'm gonna clean it out and see how it feels maybe if I clean it and re-lube it I won't have to mess with the bearing so I'm gonna use some brake cleaner just some brake cleaner from the auto parts store uh, it's gonna be a good degreaser it's gonna cut through all the grease and grime that's in there I'm gonna clean out the the planetary gears, bearings, and, and the gearbox really well. And I'm going to do this outside, obviously, because it's, it's pretty messy. So I cleaned out the um, gearbox housing with the brake clean and dried it all out. Took my time doing that. I also used a little wire brush to help get some of the grit out. And I've also cleaned and dried all the internal pieces. This is definitely sounding better and spinning freer. I do, however, think possibly the bearing is on its way out. It'll probably last uh, quite a bit longer, but I would say this is an example of poor um, gearbox maintenance on my part. I should have been relubing this gearbox uh, maybe once or twice throughout a contest season, and I didn't. And then you pay the price for not maintaining your stuff, you know, that's how it is. But uh, it is spinning pretty free. So I'm just going to go ahead and reassemble this and, and re-lube it just to show you guys how the process goes. So I'm going to get a clean rag here and I'm going to just try to clean the threads off as good as I can and get them dried out. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the um, adapter. I've also sprayed and cleaned the motor as well. Okay. And then the next thing I'm going to do is put the um, planetary gears back in the housing. Be pretty careful with these. You don't want to drop these or knock the uh, the, ra the races out. And then, um, so I have the inner races in on the shafts. And what I'm going to do before I stick the gears on there is I'm going to put a little bit of lube on or grease. So we'll just put a touch of grease. And now. We'll put the outer gears onto the inner races.
like that. And this is actually a grease that uh, Rise in our cells, but I'm sure you could use any high quality grease. So, after the outer uh, gears are on, I'm going to, um, or the planetary gears are fully assembled, I'm going to put a little more grease in the gearbox. Give it a spin. Everything's fully lubricated. A little more in there. Okay, set that aside. And then I'm just going to put a, a smidge of grease on this face here of the adapter plate. Then I'm going to take this washer, put it back on, and a little grease. On the outside face of the washer, and put a little grease on the pinion gear, like that. There we go, we're basically ready to put this motor back together. And then the next thing I'm going to do is get a little bit of medium thread lock. And I'm just going to put a few drops on the threads. Don't get it beyond the threads so it goes inside the gearbox, but just a little bit on the threads like that. Got a little bit of cleanup to do here. Okay. Make sure that washer is in the right spot. And then hold the gearbox upside down. Slide the pinion between the gears. And you can thread this back on. Definitely feels better. Doesn't feel like it's new though. That's for sure. Now let's tighten this up. Again, we're going to do the same thing with the wrench. And then we're going to tighten this guy up. Just hand tight. good and that's basically it so doing this has got me really curious now because I have a light model with a 10 shock Viper in the same gearbox and that's the model I fly the most and now I am curious what the state of its gearbox and motor is because I definitely don't want that thing to burn up on me or fail in a contest situation. So I think I'm going to quickly uh, pull that motor out of my model and see what that looks like. There's the front of my light model. Look at the state of that. Look how grimy that is. So I got to clean that up a little bit and uh, pull those screws out of there to get that motor out. Okay, here's the motor out of my light model. It's a 1020 Viper. The same gearbox, and this is definitely feeling a lot better than the uh, the strong, the windy motor. So let's pull this guy apart and see what we get. Okay, this is feeling better than the other gearbox we took apart. Definitely looks like there's a lack of grease in there, and what grease is left is very thin and black. So again, we're going to go ahead and uh, clean everything up, just like we did the other one.
All right, got my gearbox cleaned up and relubed. Same thing with the motor. I got that washer on there with uh, grease top and bottom. A little bit of thread lock. And we're just going to put this guy back together. Like that. Feeling pretty good. And then I'll just go ahead and uh, tighten the gearbox up with the wrenches, so same way as I did the other one. Alright, so we're there, there we go. We have two motors and gearboxes serviced. Um, what's the moral of the story? Well, the moral is, guys, you, gotta, you have to do your maintenance on your motors and gearboxes. It doesn't matter what brand you're using. If you're using a gearbox... At least twice a year, I would say, put try to get some lube in there, and you know, at least once per season, do a complete teardown, relube everything, check everything, check the bearings, clean everything out, put it all back together. And if you need to replace something, replace something. You don't want to burn up your motor in the middle of a contest. You know, you can imagine the horn going off for your F5J round and you throw your model out of your hand and two seconds later the motor burns up and dies and there you are you know five meters off the ground and you're gonna have to try to somehow find a thermal and fly it out right it's gonna be a tough situation so yeah maintenance 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 check your motors and gearboxes at least a few times a year do all the necessary lubing and cleaning and you should be a happy camper so Hope that was kind of informative. I don't know, it was a pretty basic video. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.